face. But what did they say? The best way to hide information is right in your face. Well, uh-huh. That's right. So, it is. But the thing about this is that we have to realize the state of mind that we're in. In today's society, we are, we like to be pacified. And a lot of times, some of us, I always mention that I'm a contractor. I'm the type of person I roll up my sleeves. So I'm the type of person I'll get in the trenches. A lot of times, people want things to be ready made for them. And they don't want to put the, what we call sweat equity, into anything. Right. Um, I think you get what you get in, what you put in. And um, I think if you only put 10% in, you only deserve 10%. If you put in 100%, you deserve it all. And you should not feel no way if you have to leave some people behind because of the simple fact. When you have a vision and you seek knowledge and things don't open up for you, Mm -hmm. you need to know that sometimes some things you need to leave behind. And that's old information. Because I think, especially as minorities, we recycle a lot of old process information that 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 doesn't do us any good today. Yeah, I can agree with that. I really can. Because that whole notion of you got to do great in school to get the great grades, to go to college, to get a good job, right. that's kind of out of the window. You you know, even if you go to college, you're you're in college thinking of a way to make a, a, a place in the world without having to find a job. You're inventing a job. You're you're making income appear where there is no other you know these young kids these days these millennials i talk about them all the time they are doing some things that we only dreamed of and even if we you know were able to dream of we just thought about like wow i wonder if i wonder what ha- what would happen if these kids are fearless and they're getting the information early and they're running with it and i think you know with all of us being the parents and some people being the grandparents of these millennials we need to be able to keep up too and we need to be able to, to piggyback on what you're saying, I agree with that because I gave birth to one like that. My son has become a software engineer. He graduated next year and he's already, you know, started a business and he's 19. That's wonderful. Um, he'd be 20, but uh, I said that to say is that we need to learn the one thing that we haven't been taught. And the one thing we have never really been taught that they don't really touch in school unless you go to school for it. And even if you go to school for it, they're not going to touch it in a way that shows you how to start a business. They're touching it in a way for you to work for someone. It's economic. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Is that uh, when you are in business, you're supposed to have, I think what happens with a lot of people, they don't like talking about money and they don't like talking about finances and credit. Like a lot of people get embarrassed. Me, I think you should be very very, very transparent because right. when you're transparent, you face your fears, you teach your children something, they get something out of it, and they say, hey, you know what, I want to pick up where my dad and my mom left off because right. it gives them a surge of energy. But at the same time, I think that business business credit and business funding should be something taught at home. Once you know it, you should teach that to your children. You should teach it to your teenagers especially um, because then they get a different sense of life and they get a different sense of purpose. That's Most true. You just want to work for someone. But I think it's exhilarating when you have a young child or a young teenager or a young lady or a young man who wants to start a business, especially if it, if it makes sense. Mm-hmm. They should be fully supported. And so I think uh, business credit is, is totally important. I think learning um, the, and, and getting involved in a program that teaches you how to separate it. Because a lot of times we start it from being a guarantor or we get it from running a credit check. And my program is with no credit check and never, ever being a guarantor. You can have poor credit and still have excellent business credit. And I think that most people are too scared to that, you know, think that that can exist. But it, it's been existing uh, duh, for like a couple hundred years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Believe me. And the good thing is if you learn how to manage your business finances, it's going to trickle into your personal life anyway, because you're going to look at things a little differently. You know, I learned a long time ago, there's a difference between an asset and a liability. And as long as you question everything that you do between, is it an asset or a liability, you'll tend to make better you know, decisions just, just to, you know, begin to the process of doing better in life with your finances. I agree, and, 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 but the thing is, is that, um, we, uh, we definitely, we definitely need to, um, 
be more conscious and stop being scared to spend money. I think with most people, they will spend two thousand dollars on a bag when they get their taxes. Mm-hmm. They will put five, six, seven thousand on a car to ride around look cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll see women spend six, seven hundred on human hair. Uh, when I talk to them about, and I don't wear my humans, but I know one thing, I'm not giving nobody anything before I pay myself and do what I need to do because I don't have, I'm not bald-headed. I will form roll. <laughs> Honey, I know the feeling. Yes, and I think that we have to learn to realize that beauty starts from the inside out and confidence comes from the inside more than the outside. And I think now this generation, everything's on the outside, even the adults. And this is what we're teaching our children. And so that's why business credit is not is so far-fetched. Because we're not, we're not really putting our money where our mouths are. Right. And I think that um, sometimes you need to fall back and uh, stop turn, turning up so much and learn to turn down. Mm-hmm. So things come to you more in silence than distractions. Very and true. And so um, I'm very, I'm a huge person of solace and peace of mind and really researching and studying because um, that's the only way I was able to figure this out. This was like, it took 20 years for me to really, really, really get it up and to get it together. Like, at least 20. And, and, and that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But at least you did it, you know. And now you're helping other people do it. Yes, so- I have to because I really realized that I speak to people, how many people, they look at it, oh, I'm taking out a loan. I'm like, no, it's not a loan. What you're doing <laughs> is creating a paid score. And the paid score is what is equivalent to your FICO score to your personal a uh, personal credit. And so your paid score is your equivalency for your business credit. And so you can't your it, it, your business, even though you're making money, it has no value to it. Mm-hmm. Well, if you want to sell the business and you have at least two hundred thousand dollars worth of credit and your income stream for the business maybe another two hundred, you can sit back and say, you know what, I'm gonna sell this business for four fifty. And if this is valuable and it has been it's been packaged correctly, somebody would buy it. Some people, some people have plenty of money where they want to walk into a, a ready-made system. Some people don't want to figure it out. Right. But if business is not valuable if there's no credit. That is it's true. There. There's no Dun & Bradstreet there. There's no FedEx there. There's nothing there. So we need to learn that we have to create value, not just the service. The service and the value should be married to each other. And um, one can't do without the other. If you want to have a business to leave to your family or to sell or to do whatever you want to do or to start it over again, you can have as many businesses as you want to with the business money. You can have poor credit. And I think that's what people don't understand. They need to learn to. Because at the end of the day, you have to realize you're not owning anything anyway. People say, oh, I own a house. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't have all the satisfaction. You don't own a house. That's exactly. If you paid $100,000 for a house, you really spent $286,000 because usually you almost paying three times more for the house. Exactly. So we have to learn to be careful about when we own things. You know, we're, we are operators or we're managers or we're renting or we're leasing, but we're not owning. Mm-hmm. So even if you own it, you still don't. You still have to pay the taxes for the land and or for the house itself. And if you don't pay the taxes or even if you don't pay your HOA, because I always did real estate. And if you don't do your own HOA, they can take your whole house for $50 a month for, for two years. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So really so why, quick. That, yeah. Um, tell us how to reach you. Yes, ma'am. Well, they can reach me at ninasouthenterprises.com. They can go to my website. We have a new website uh, being formed that's going to be even more interactive with another with a, with, with program just for entrepreneurs. But to get the information that they need to know about the business funding program, I have a couple of packages on there. They can go to Nina Style, that's N-I-N-A-S-T-Y-L-E-S, Enterprise, with an S, dot com. Or they can feel free to call me at 877-390-9933. And the program is nationwide in all 50 states. And they can call me toll free. And I will give them a consultation to let them know and set up a strategy of what their plans and visions are so we can help them take it from there. That is fabulous. And I understand you have some really great packages too. So, you know, I am, I tell everyone, if you're listening, even if somebody told you to listen to this later on and you're downloading it on your uh, phone or your tablet or whatever, 
please get this information because this is vital information. Everyone always talks about rebuilding their community, but they don't really know where to start. If you're starting at the root and building a strong foundation, you have a really good chance of doing just what you're setting out to do instead of just wasting a lot of time, energy, and money. You can be actually putting it to use in a good way. So, Miss Nina, thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your schedule and, um, you know, com- coming on and talking to us. I look forward to seeing you soon and working with you more because, of yeah. course, I'm, I'm, I'm on it with you, girlfriend. I'm there. Um, yeah. and I've been telling everybody about you ever since we met and everyone's like, thank okay, you. well, you let me know when and let's do it. That's, you know, so. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, definitely. I appreciate you too. And- Good luck and God bless with all your endeavors. And, and uh, like I said, you know, um, I definitely want to listen to the audience to know that really right now we're losing a million jobs by 2018. I just want to say this. By 2018, a million jobs is already lost. Um, if a million jobs is being lost by 2018, we're only six months. And, and so that means that we need to do something and we need to do it fast. So starting a business is not a leisure anymore. It's a necessity. And I just wanted to end on that note. Most definitely. And thank you. Thank you so, so much for giving us a call. Okay. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, Miss Nina Styles, you, you know, of course I'm on download so you can download, play it back, get all of her information because she is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to finances and your business and everything. So you definitely want to get with her. So, um, we'll be back. I'm going to let you go listen to some music and I'll be back with you. Please feel free. You know my Facebook tag. And you know all about me. My Facebook tag, of course, is Low B Low Barber. 
Instagram, Low Barber, real easy. Uh, email address is lowfortunate at gmail.com. L O E 